Good morning and welcome back. Daniel Parker with Parker Executive Search. Uh, we're going to conduct a mock interview today for Athletic Director University. Very excited about this session. I have Jill Bodensteiner with us from uh, Notre Dame today. Welcome, Jill. Thanks, Daniel. Great to be here. Yeah, great to, uh, great to have you. And we're going to put you here in the hot seat and ask Love you it. five or six questions about moving from Senior Associate Athletic Director into the Director of Athletics role. So if we can, we'll just jump right into the, uh, the first question. And just four or five minutes, talk to us a okay. little bit about yourself. We have your resume. We have your bio. But, but expand beyond the resume about who you are and specifically why you want to be our next Director of Athletics. Great. Well, first of all, thanks so much for having me here. I couldn't be happier to get a chance to meet with you and to tell my story and get to know a little bit more about you. So I think what you'll find as we have this conversation is I'm a passionate and strategic leader. And uh, you know, one of the things I'm extraordinarily passionate about is college athletics. And really that stems from watching the growth and development of student athletes when they arrive on campus as you know, sometimes 17 year olds, 18 year olds, and till the time they get that degree and move out into the real world. That's been an extraordinarily rewarding uh, experience and journey for me. Uh, the strategic part comes into play in terms of really understanding the culture and the landscape of college athletics mm -hmm and what it can do for the mission and the strategic goals of the institution. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I'm here uh, talking to you all is because I think my vision really does match up. Mm -hmm. um, I see ways that athletics, having read through the strategic plan of the institution, I see the ways uh, that athletics can really help support those greater goals of the university. And I'm excited to have that opportunity to help really marry those two. Um, you know, my, my background is uh, came raised by a family where social justice was sort of the prominent theme, uh, 15 years as a practicing lawyer, and I certainly bring both of those things to the table. Over the past 10 years in Notre Dame athletics, I've really had the opportunity to, to, to do exactly what I just described, is look yeah. and take a step back and say, this is, this is who we're about. How is athletics helping us as an institution meet those goals? Um, and I, and I, you know, we're in an interesting time in the mm -hmm. landscape of intercollegiate athletics. And I think part of what we can do better is marry those two things, marry the strategic goals of an institution, uh, academically, globally, all of the things that, that university presidents are thinking about and, and really marry and, and use athletics to, to, to bring those and marry those and bring them to the table. I think we've done that extraordinarily well at Notre Dame and I mm -hmm. suspect we'll talk about yeah. um, whether through facilities or, or strategic planning, we'll get into some of those details. But um, again, I I'm, couldn't be happier to be here today and get an opportunity to, to talk a little bit about how I see that developing um, here at State University. Great. You mentioned vision a little bit. Uh, I'd love to hear moving from the senior associate into the AD role. I know you've thought about this a lot. When you become our athletic director, what's your vision for our athletic department going to look like? Yeah, I mean, the first thing, again, it goes back to and, and why I think this is a fit. It goes back to seeing, you know, how can athletics work in the greater institutional yeah. model, um, number one. Number two, um, student athlete experience. And, and evaluating the current state of every aspect of that. You know, are mm -hmm. the, do the coaches have the resources they need to be coach educators? Yeah. Again, we're in this for the wrong reasons if we don't see the coach as one of the most important faculty members our student athletes will have. And so do the coaches have the tools and resources they need to do that effectively? Um, and I think that's really a first element of that student athlete experience. Um, facilities, resources, are, are we providing our student athletes with the ability to develop in, in all the ways that are important to us? Uh, mind, body, spirit, whatever it may be at each institution, are we, are we giving them the chance to do that? in a really effective way. And I think a third part of the vision is what's our story and are we telling it? Yeah. And I, I think in, in, in this, again, in this day and age, you get a lot of people debating about the role and value of college athletics. Right. Um, that I think in some ways we just need to take a deep breath and say, look at all these, look at our 630 student athletes or whatever the yeah. number is at, at any particular institution. 
look at these phenomenal stories and are we telling them? Yeah. And so, you know, a huge part of, of what I've already started to do, certainly with this institution and would continue to do yeah. is, is, you know, are we getting that, are we making a difference? And if so, are we telling that story in a time where frankly we could use a little bit more of those good, good storytelling? So yeah. that, that's a little bit from, from strategically, are we the right, yeah. are, we, are we geared up to, to support the institution? What's the student athlete experience, including the coaches, and are we telling our story? Yeah. Jill, diversity and inclusion is critically important at our institution. You talked a little, about, a little bit about the soccer coach search you just wrapped up. Can you, can you really expand about, about how you recruit a diverse pool of candidates for consideration in coaching or in administration? Absolutely, and, and diversity in the broadest sense is part of my fabric. Um, and I'm really proud of some of the opportunities I've had. So I was a group, part of a group that founded our first affirmative action office at Notre Dame 18 years ago. I supervised that office, so there, that's the process part of it. Mm -hmm. The critical part is relationships, and if we're forming relationships with a wide group of people once the search uh, becomes imminent, it's too late. Mm -hmm. So my philosophy is for, for the entire staff, let's be out forming those relationships, getting to know people, networking, so that our short lists are incredibly diverse and brought in every aspect, in compliance, in fundraising, in coaching, uh, I, I expect the same. And, that, mm -hmm. and that's really what it's all about. We all want, we all want to work with people we know and trust. Mm -hmm. and, and a big problem we have is our knowing and trusting circles are too small. Mm -hmm. And we all tend to go toward people who look like us. So I think it's imperative immediately when I get to the institution to start, continue my work of building those relationships yeah. in that network and encourage everyone on staff to do the same. Yeah, good. It's a bit of an arms race out there from a facility standpoint, and Notre Dame just completed a, a pretty massive uh, project. Can you, can you talk a little bit about how that came about and, and uh, uh, where that sits there on campus now? Yeah, sure. It was a phenomenal opportunity to really, I'll go back to my philosophical approach to athletics, was to marry what we're doing academically and student services yep. with athletics. And so we're, we're sort of literally putting our money where our mouth is on a $400 million project surrounding the iconic Notre Dame football stadium that includes a student center for all 12,000 undergrads and graduates at Notre Dame, uh, Department of Anthropology, the Department of Psychology, music and sacred music, all built around the Notre Dame football stadium. And again, talk about walking past something every day that says this is what our values are and mm -hmm. here's how we're gonna integrate athletics into the bigger strategic goals of the university. And it was really, it was a university project, um, mm -hmm. not an athletics project. One of the key takeaways I have and something I think Notre Dame and, and Jack in particular do very well is balancing tradition at a place like Notre Dame with innovation. You can't get stuck in, in all you know, traditions that started in 1800 and say we're going to call it. Um, you, you've got to maintain those traditions and that great sense of history and you have to continue to innovate. Yeah. And I think that's another thing that this building represents, right? There's a video board in a football stadium that, yeah. that some folks thought would never have one. Um, and so, you know, it's a, it's a campus resource, it's a community resource, and it, it was just a really critical piece, again, for us to say, this is what is important to us as an institution and how can we do that. Yeah. If you're our next athletic director, fundraising is critically important on, on our campus. Nowadays, presidents and chancellors, deans, and athletic directors, even coaches, are, are raising money. So can you talk a little bit about your philosophy on, on uh, fundraising? Absolutely, and that's one of the areas that frankly excites me the most because I think there's a real opportunity here. And to me, fundraising is about two things. It's about articulating a vision that gets people excited, and it's about building relationships. Yeah. And so, uh, although uh, you know I, I've never been in a development office, I think those are mm -hmm. two of my strengths. I'm a strategic thinker and a passionate thinker, as I stated at the beginning. So to, so to be really clear about what our vision is and that that vision needs resources, mm -hmm. and then to go build those relationships, that's the fun part, right? Right? These are, this is hardly feels like work yeah. when you're building those sort of relationships with friends and donors and potential donors of the university. And, and I really, I look forward to that. And I think what, as soon as the, the team here establishes that, that great vision, it's going to be fun to sell it. Yeah. Let's expand a little bit right there. Uh, after the press conference, the first 90 days as our athletic director, what, is, what does that look like for you? A lot of listening. I know that's <clears throat> cliche, but I'm a, 
I'm a big listener. I'm a, not a march in and here's my way. This is what Notre Dame does. Every institution's different. And again, you've got to wed uh, the goals of the institution and, and the, the focus of the athletic department. So campus relationships, donor and friend relationships, uh, student athlete relationships, coach relationships, all of those are absolutely critical. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and in order to, to be able to form those relationships, you got to do a lot of listening. Mm -hmm. uh, what's working for you? What could you? Where could you use support? What can we do better and differently? And, and what do you love about this place? Yeah. And, and I think that's so. So of course, you know, I'm not one to sit back and not make any decisions. So I think you got to find that balance in the first 90 days of keeping things going. Yeah. Um, and, and I think I did that effectively when I when I transitioned from general counsel to athletics. I was brand new to athletics mm -hmm. uh, at a more senior part in my career. So I think. I think for the first year I did a lot of listening. Yeah. One thing that's really unique in, in your background is you have been on uh, both sides of campus and it's critically important you come to our institution that athletics doesn't operate in a silo or off on an island. So can you talk a little bit uh, about your vision of where athletics sits on, on our university campus? If we don't have full integration in finances, human resources, all of those areas, it's not going to work. And so I'm a big believer and I think that's one of the things I sold about myself when I moved at Notre Dame into the athletics department is I've got relationships with every dean. I've got relationships, uh, you know, with, I was the lawyer for the folks in the finance department. I was the embedded lawyer for the HR department. Let's make sure we're all moving the ship in the same direction. Yeah. Um, and so that, I, you know, again, I think being a part of the president's cabinet and bringing that experience um, that I had in the academy and in the other divisions of a university would be a real strength of mine. Yeah. Last question for you. Uh, I like to ask about mentors, and, and I know you've been around some, some Hall of Fame coaches and, and some outstanding athletic directors. So talk a little bit about uh, your mentors and what you've learned from, from those mentors and how that will translate to, to your uh, becoming our athletic director. So first and foremost, to be mentored, you need to be open to being mentored. And so I think, it, again, I'm not done learning. I'm just starting to yeah. learn. And a perfect example is I thought I knew how to write when I ended law school. And then I, one of my first mentors was a federal judge, and I wrote my first opinion, and it came back, redo. Uh, and I learned how to write for real from that. So, so being open to it and realizing yeah. I have areas of growth. But for, from that judge to my, to my boss when I was in the general counsel's office to Jack, um, and to watching our coaches and who does what well. Um, you know, some of them, that we have a great group of coaches. Some are better at breaking down films. Some handle the pre and post game better. Right. So taking nuggets from, from all of those, whether it's a formal mentoring relationship or again, just observing and listening. Um, but you know, I, Jack taught me the business, ta taught me the industry and has really helped me become a strategic thinker um, and really be able to articulate what the issues are. And so I, I really will be forever grateful grateful to Jack for helping me uh, understand what this is all about and, and and I think I've been very open to it. What about some coaches? You, some specifics that you've learned from coaches, maybe good and bad? Well, I, it, working with Muffet McGraw right now, I mean, she's a Hall of Famer. She's done this for 30 years at Notre Dame and I remember when Jack said, I want you to be Muffet's sport administrator. I yeah. thought, what can I bring to the table here, right? She's, she she kind of knows what she's right. doing. Um, and, and we've developed a great relationship over the past nine years and one of the fun things about Muffet is why you know right now we have four ACL tears yeah. that's not the fun part but the fun part mm -hmm. is she's got seven scholarship players and to her it's just back to the puzzle room yeah. how can I fit how can I change around their roles and make this puzzle work and yeah. I think she's absolutely masterful at that and that's roles not only where are you gonna score the ball but who's the new leader yeah. and and so just sort of watching her adapt on the fly is something I think again a lot of us you know we all have it at times think well I, I know what I'm doing yeah um, and to watch a seasoned Hall of Fame coach step back and say I gotta adapt yeah. has been has been something I've really learned from her great well thank you for uh, taking some time I, I don't think that was uh, was too tough for you it, it seemed like a, a really good flow and uh, certainly uh, appreciate you taking some time to go through this process I think it's very helpful to uh, hopefully to you but also Absolutely. to the many listeners and, and people that are going to be watching online I appreciate the opportunity and again thank you Daniel for you and your colleagues for everything you're doing for uh, particularly with uh, helping women and other forms of diversity in college athletics we really appreciate you thank you Jill it means a lot